Good morning and welcome to Paradise Coast Church. We are glad that you have joined us today. Jesus says that wherever two or three are gathered together in his name, and I see that we have far more than that. We are a quorum and then some. Wherever two or three are gathered in his name, Jesus says there he is in the midst of them. So, God is in the house. We want to have a prayer to uh, welcome God among us this morning. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather. We thank you for the technology that allows us to be together. And we thank you for your presence here in this house and for your presence in houses in Naples, for your presence in houses in Connecticut and in Cleveland and in lots of places in between. We ask, Father, that you would be at work in the midst of our service this morning. Holy Spirit, come and be among us and move among us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So as you check in, uh, say good morning, tell us where you're from, and if you have any prayer requests, please share those prayer requests with us. Prayer requests. We're going to be praying in a few moments, and we would like to have prayer requests. Good morning, Marty. Welcome from the estates. Good morning, Connie and Flock. Good to see you. Send your prayer requests in. Who else we got? Well, as we are... Good morning, Dottie from Olmstead Falls. Good to see you. Okay, Connie asked us to pray for the persecuted church in Nigeria. Been reading some about that, so we will do that. Send in your prayer request, and we will pray for them in a few moments. Would like to read Psalm 2, Psalm number 2. Why do the nations conspire in the people's plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up, and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. The one enthroned in heaven laughs and scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. I will proclaim the Lord's decree. He said to me, You are my son today. I have become your father. Ask me, and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. You will break them with a rod of iron. You will dash them to pieces like pottery. Therefore, you kings, be wise. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling. Kiss his son, or he will be angry, and your way will lead to your destruction. For his wrath can flare up in a moment. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. Good words this morning. It seems like everyone is going their own way, but uh, the psalmist says it is God's way that will prevail. So, uh, prayer requests. Okay, we will pray for Don's neighborhood, along with praying for Nigeria. Harold asked us to pray for a friend of his, Orlando, who lost his wife, Annie, this week. Uh, yeah, Don asked us to pray for all people, regardless of our differences. And uh, let's see, is Lynn out there? Lynn, good morning, and welcome from Connecticut. Other prayer requests, other people out there? Good morning, Jose. Welcome from North Naples. Any other prayer requests? Okay. We're going to pray in uh, three, two, last chance, one. All right. Let us pray. Our Father, we rejoice at this opportunity to come to you today and to worship. For you are the Lord God, the creators of the heavens and the earth. 
with your word you said, let it be, and it was. You said, let there be light, and there was light. You said, let there be dry ground, and there was dry ground. You said, let the seas be gathered into an area, and the seas were gathered up. You said, let there be fish in the sea, and there were fish. You said, let there be stars in the sky, and a moon at night, and there was. And you said, let there be vegetation on the face of the earth, and there was. And you said, uh, let us create animals and birds and things that crawl along the ground and other things that live in the sea along with the fish. And at the very sound of your word, all of these things came to be. And the earth was set up. And then, Father, you made we humans out of the dust of the ground. You formed us with your hands into your image, and you breathed your life into us. We are amazed at the way that you created all that is. We are amazed at the way that you make it all work together. All of these systems functioning in harmony with all of the other systems, the right amount of water in the right places for the plants to grow and the right amount of sunshine and the right amount of heat and the sun is not too far and it's not too close and there's not too much rain and there's not too little rain and the wind doesn't blow too hard and, and it just all works together. We are amazed at the way that you can bring all of these pieces, parts, and make them work. You are an amazing God. You are an amazing God. And you are here present with us. Not a way out there somewhere, but here present with us. And you, the amazing God who made all of this, who are present with us, love us. Love us far more than we can imagine. Love us far more than we value ourselves. We praise you, Father, for who you are. And as we come before you, amazed at your presence, we see that often we fall short. And we ask your forgiveness this morning. We ask your forgiveness for our fears and anxieties, fears and anxieties about uh, what's going to happen in our country about who's saying this and who's saying that, fears and anxieties about uh, riots and unrest and turmoil and people threatening to burn the country and legislators on one side saying we're going to do this and legislators on another side saying we're going to do something else. Forgive us, Father, for our anxiety. Forgive us for our worry. Forgive us for our fear. Forgive us for acting like you don't care. Forgive us for acting like you're nowhere around. Forgive us for acting like all of these things are overpowering and overwhelming to you, too. Forgive us for forgetting that you are the Lord God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and that our times are in your hand, and that you are the one that is in control of the destiny of nations, and that nothing happens without your approval. And that even the darkness is your darkness, and you work in the midst of us. Forgive us for our fear and our anxiety and our unrest. Please send peace upon us. Please change our hearts, and please change our lives, so that we can live in confidence and with faith in you, and go about our ways in peace and in hope with the certainty that you are there and that you are working all things for good and that there is nothing that we need fear. We thank you, Father, for the way that you work in our lives. We thank you for the times that you have answered our prayers. We thank you for the times that you have made a way when we could see no way. We thank you for the times when we were sick and you healed us. We thank you for those of us that you have brought through coronavirus. We thank you for your work in our lives, and we thank you for your work across our country. We thank you for all of those who are recovering from coronavirus. We thank you for all of those 
uh, who have had the virus and did not die and did not need to go to the hospital. We thank you for the medicines that you have made available. We thank you for the hospital rooms that you have made available. And we thank you for the way that you are working through those to bring healing and help to us and to our country. We pray, Father, for those who, uh, who have the virus. We ask that you would bring healing to them. We pray for those who are in uh, intensive care. We ask that you would bring recovery to them. We pray, Father, for families who have lost loved ones, for families whose uh, family members have been among the death count that we read. Please bring comfort and peace to them. Father, we pray for Orlando, who uh, lost his wife, Annie. Please bring peace and comfort to him as he grieves and mourns. We pray, Father, for the church in Nigeria. Please give them strength. Holy Spirit, please come and dwell among them and bring your peace in their hearts. Please bring an end to this persecution. But while it is there, we ask that you would use the persecution not only to strengthen your people there, but to expand their witness and to bring lots of others in Nigeria to you. Father, we pray that you would help us across our country to listen to one another, to hear one another, to be able to resolve our differences with one another, to be able to forgive one another, to be able to live in peace with one another. Please help us. Father, we pray for Don and her neighborhood, and we ask that you would bring peace within her neighborhood. We ask that you would help all of the neighbors there to uh, connect with one another, to relate with one another, to uh, love one another, to care about one another. And we pray that not only for Don's neighborhood, but for all of our neighborhoods. Father, we pray for uh, President Trump. We ask that you would keep him safe. We ask that you would be at work with his leaders and with his advisors. We pray, Father, for Mitch McConnell and the United States Senate and all the senators and all of their staff there. We pray for Nancy Pelosi and for the House of Representatives, for all of those officials and all of the staff that works with them. Please lead them and guide them and help them to be able to work together with one another. We pray for uh, governors and mayors and city councils and school boards all across this country as a large part of managing this virus uh, uh, rest upon them. We ask that you would give all of our officials uh, wisdom uh, with uh, when and how to, uh, to, to reopen and to uh, phase in the opening till we are uh, completely open. We ask for wisdom for them. We ask that you would uh, just get rid of this coronavirus. We look forward to the days when our country will return to, uh, to normal. And in the meantime, we ask that you would give us the strength and the stamina that we need to get through this. Father, we ask that as our service continues this morning, that you would open our ears that we might hear. That you would open our minds that we might understand. That you would open our hearts that we might receive all that you have for us this day. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. We have more what? More prayer requests that came in. You want to share those with us? Jose wants us to pray for rooms to be rented in uh, in a house that he owns. Oh, Harold's sister and husband celebrate 50 years of married life. Congratulations to them. Roger asked prayer for good test results. Roger asked prayer for good test results uh, there in Connecticut. Good morning, Dorothy. And uh, we will pray for your friend's marriage. 
Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Bruce and Carol, all the way from Tennessee. John and Debbie, all the way from Bonita Springs. Good to see you. Roy and Lauren from Naples, good to have you aboard this morning. All righty, great. Great, so we'll, uh, we'll get those uh, other prayer requests a little later on in the service. I want to uh, continue uh, with the message. Oh, uh, so we should go there. Hey, last week we uh, opened the message by uh, looking at this chart. And we see from this chart that uh, history uh, runs in cycles of around 100 years or so, and that those cycles are a, a first turning, a high where we're building. Then there's a second turning, which is an awakening, where we look inward, and revivals often happen here. There's a third turning, where the arrangements and the agreements that were made in the first two turnings begin to unravel. And then in the fourth turning, there's a crisis, where everything comes apart, and we begin working at putting things back together again. We uh, looked over this chart, and we located ourselves on the chart in the bottom left-hand corner, we are in the midst of crises. And we know from looking at past crises that nothing is the same after the crises. After the American Revolution, nothing was the same. Everything was different. After the Civil War, nothing was the same. Everything was different. After the Great Depression and World War II, everything was the same. Everything was different. And so it's going to be with this crisis. When we come out the other end of this, things are going to be different. What is it going to look like on the other side of the crisis? I don't know. How are we going to come out of this crisis? I don't know. Just as people going into the Revolutionary War didn't know how it would end, or the Civil War didn't know how it would end, or the Great Depression and World War II didn't know how it would end, we don't know how this is going to end. But there is one thing that we know. We know how to influence what's going to happen with this crisis and how it's going to end and how we're going to come through. And the way that we influence it is this way. We pray. When we pray, God hears. God acts. Stuff happens. The future belongs to those who pray. So it's going to be you and I, people who pray, who are going to determine what is going to happen in this crisis and what's going to happen through this crisis and what's going to happen on the other side of this crisis and what it's going to look like. It's you and I. So the question today then is how can we pray in such a way to bring America through this crisis so that we become on the other side of the crisis the country and the people that God wants us to be? How do we pray America through this crisis? Anyone interested? Yeah, I, I see some hands out there. Okay, I got an amen over here. Good. So uh, let's take a look. The way that I'm going to suggest that we pray America through this crisis is with an acronym, A-C-T-S, the acronym acts. Uh, some of you learn how to pray this way. It's been around for decades. And the letters are A for adoration, C for confession, T for thanksgiving, S for supplication. So we're going to pack, unpack all those in terms of not praying personally, but in terms of us praying for our country. So here we go. Adoration is declaring who God is. It's about praise. It's about telling God who he is. Father, you are the Lord, the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth. You are the one who made the sun. The sun that you made is 93 million miles away from the earth. The light from the sun traveling at 186,000 miles per second takes eight minutes to get here. 
The sun is so far away and so big. The sun is 864 some thousand miles in diameter. Now, that number is too big for me. I can't conceive it. So I, I need help to bring it down to size. So uh, if the Earth is a golf ball, the sun would be 15 feet in diameter. And if the Earth were a golf ball, well, even if the Earth wasn't a golf ball, the sun is so big that 960,000 Earths will fit into the sun. God made the sun so big, 960,000 Earths will fit into it. If the Earth were the size of a golf ball, 960,000 golf balls fills a school bus. And God, you made all this. It's huge. And the sun that you made produces enough or produces more energy each second than we humans have consumed in our entire history. Amazing. God, you are so big, so strong, so powerful, so amazing that you created the sun at just the right distance from the earth to light it and to heat it. It's incredible. <laughs> and not only are you an amazing, incredible God, but you are near us. You are with us. As we saw from uh, the uh, first part of Psalm 22, or first part of Psalm 2, uh, you are so big that the nations, even though they conspire and they plot in vain, you aren't threatened. It doesn't bother you at all. The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their chains and throw off their shackles. And when they do that, you aren't threatened. You aren't threatened. You aren't afraid. When they do that, you laugh. You who created the heavens and the earth, you who created the sun 960,000 times larger than the earth, laugh. Laugh at the plans of the nations, laugh at the plans of the people, because you know, Lord, that they can accomplish nothing without you. There is nothing that happens apart from you. You are large and in charge. Praise, adoration. And when we praise God, when we declare who God is, adoration changes our perspective. It right-sizes things. It makes mountains molehills. It takes worries away. So the media says this and the media says that. Do you think God cares? No! He's not threatened. So when we praise God, we get things in the right perspective. We right-size things. And so any prayer that we're going to pray for our nation has to begin with adoration because the things that are going on in our nation are bigger than we are. Uh, they overwhelm us, but they don't overwhelm God. And in order to get things in the right size, we have to praise. So we praise. Then we want to confess. And where I'm going to go with confession is to uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Well, what are the devil's schemes? Well, the devil only has three tricks. The devil's tricks are he lies, he steals, he kills. The devil lies, steals, and destroys. That's, that's all he does. So take your stand against the devil's schemes. Be aware of the lies, be aware of the stealing, be aware of the destruction. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Our struggle is not against each other. Our struggle is not against those who disagree with us on social issues or political issues. Uh, our struggle is not against those who are wearing masks or those who aren't wearing masks. That's not who our struggle is against. Our struggle is against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. 
Now, uh, I'm not going to unpack all of that this morning, but what I want us to understand is the devil in his schemes whispers in our ear. And he whispers lies in our ears to get us to react in one of these ways. Found in Galatians 5, these are the works of the flesh. Whispers in our ear, lies to us so that we will be sexually immoral or impure or uh, get caught in debauchery. That's party all day and all night. Idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. The devil whispers in our ear and gets us to act in one of these ways. So I want to start in the middle of this list with the idolatry and the witchcraft. Uh, that is about power. That is about power. The devil whispers in our ear saying we need to get power apart from God to do what it is we want to do when we want to do it. So turn to idolatry, turn to witchcraft, go to wherever it is you need to go to get the power to do whatever it is that you want to do. So we work at getting power to do what it is we want to do when we want to do it. Then when somebody gets in our way, what do we do? There's hatred. How dare they? Or there's discord. We start talking against them. We start gossiping about them. We start saying things about them that aren't true. Or there's jealousy. I'm jealous of the people who have more money than I have, who have more power than I have, who are able to do what it is they want to do in ways that I can't do what it is that I want to do. And all that happens with fits of rage, which is adult-sized temper tantrums, and it's because of selfish ambition, and there's more dissension, more factions, more pulling into our own silos, more uh, throwing insults uh, at those who don't think like us, at those who don't agree with us, protecting ourselves from their power and the things things that they want to do, and envy, and it just all goes to pieces. And the sexual immorality and the drunkenness that is there is about how it is we try to ease the pain when we don't get what we want when we want it, and we see other people getting what they want when they want it. When we act in these ways, whether our cause is right or whether our cause is wrong, whether our cause is just or whether our cause is unjust, when we act in these ways, the devil has already won, and the powers that be, the authorities and the rulers in the heavenlies that Paul talks about, own us. And so when we come to confess, we want to confess the ways that we have let the devil whisper in our ear, and the ways that we have responded, like Paul writes about here in Galatians. Forgive me, Father, for wanting to do what it is I want to do when I want to do it. Forgive me for trying to get power apart from you. Forgive me for selfish ambition. Forgive me for speaking against those who are in my way. Forgive me for hating them. Forgive me for, and our list goes on. And when we come to this time of confession, confession is not about confessing someone else's sins. It's easy to confess the sins of America. Father, forgive our country, for we have people who are rioting and looting. We have people who are murdering and killing. We have people who are voting this way and people who are voting that way. We have people who are, and, and we confess everyone else. That's not what it is that God wants from us. He wants us to confess our own sin. Because when we confess our own sin, the ways in which we don't get it right, the ways in which we mess it up. We're getting ourselves right with God. We are becoming people as a result of confession who can partner with God in prayer to pray America through this crisis and to get America to become the country that God wants it to be. Adoration, we right-size things confession. We get ourselves right in line, in tune with God. Ready for the tea? Okay, here comes the tea. Thanksgiving. The tea is for Thanksgiving, saying thank you to God. Now, in our day, Thanksgiving's a little tough. It's a little tough because the media doesn't, uh, doesn't write about thankful things. We uh, often 
don't get to see what God's doing through the media. So we have to dig for it. We have to look for it. We have to find it on our own. So right now the media is reporting uh, spikes in COVID cases here in Florida, in Arizona, in Oklahoma, and we see the number of cases going up, up, and up, and up, and up, and they are. But we say thank you to God. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in our country. Thank you, God, that not everybody that gets COVID dies. Thank you, Father, for all the people that has recovered from COVID. Thank you, God, that my dad has recovered from COVID. Thank you that John King has recovered from COVID. Thank you that Mike Stolke has recovered from COVID. Thank you for all the people around the country who has recovered from COVID. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you, God, for medicines that you have given us and helped us to discover to treat COVID. Thank you for doctors and nurses and hospital beds that help us deal with it. Thank you, God, for giving us the strength and the stamina to get through all of the coronavirus stuff. Say thank you. Got to look around for it, but it's there. Got to dig for it, but we can find the ways that God is working. Anybody see the uh, Belmont Stakes on June 20, 2020? Belmont Stakes, horse race. Anybody see it? Anybody? Oh, oh! there we go. We got one hand. We got one person that tuned in and saw it. Thank you. I think that person's from Milwaukee. All right. So the Belmont Stakes horse race, it's one of the races of the Triple Crown, right? There's the Kentucky, there's the, uh, Kentucky Derby. There's the whatever the one in the middle is. And then there's the Belmont Stakes. And the Belmont Stakes is always the last of the Triple Crown races that is run. But this year, because of the coronavirus, the Belmont Stakes was run first. And here's our clue that God wants to talk to us through the Belmont Stakes, a horse race. Yeah, I know that's incredible. But what is it that Jesus is fond of saying? The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Whenever we see the last being first, we need to pay attention that God is doing something. So in this year of 2020, a year of getting our vision fixed, the Belmont Stakes, the last race, is now the first race. So maybe God's telling us something. So let's look a little closer at the race. Ten horses in the race. Anybody name any of the ten horses? Yeah, I thought so. So here we go. Ten horses in the race. The race begins. The horses bolt out of the starting gate. The horse that takes the early lead is a horse called Four Left. Four Left. And through the first quarter, Four Left is leading. Uh, into the halfway point, Four Left is leading. But just past the halfway point, another horse gains on Four Left, passes Four Left. That horse's name is Tis the Law. Going into the third turn, four left fades. Tis the law keeps coming on strong. We go down the back stretch. Tis the law runs away with the race and wins. Four left finishes ninth out of ten. The tenth horse, the horse that finished dead last, was a horse named Jungle Runner. Jungle Runner. Yeah, finished dead last. Now, jungle, you look the name up, jungle in, uh, in the dictionary. Yeah, trees and vines and all that kind of stuff over in Africa. It also means mayhem, disorder. And a runner is someone who distributes something, like a drug runner goes and distributes the drugs. A jungle runner would be a mayhem distributor. The Mayhem distributor finished dead last in the Belmont Stakes. The only horse finishing ahead of dead last was four left. The horse that won the race is Tis the Law. Now some more about Tis the Law. Tis the Law was a number eight horse. Number eight horse. Eight in the Bible means new beginnings. Right Dorothy? New beginnings. Number eight. The eighth horse was ridden by a jockey named Manny Franco. Where does the name Manny come from? It's short for Emmanuel. What does Emmanuel mean? God with us. 
Franco, the jockey's last name, what does that name mean? It means truth or freedom. So, <laughs> the last race is the first race. God speaking to us through the Belmont Stakes, and he says to us, I am with you to free you, and the law wins, and there's a time of new beginning, and the four left, and the mayhem finish last. Is that amazing? I'm not making this stuff up. Thank you, God, for speaking a message to us through the Belmont Stakes. Uh, all that stuff comes from a guy named Johnny Enlow. Uh, and Johnny's got about 10 more minutes of the ways that God has spoken to us through the Belmont Stakes. It's amazing. It's incredible. God is doing things in our midst. We just have to look beyond the media to find them. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. Now, Thanksgiving is important because Thanksgiving builds our faith. Thanksgiving builds our faith. We say thank you to God for what he did yesterday. Thank you, God, for the things that you have done in the last couple hundred years in our country. We say thank you to God for the things that he's doing in our country today, for the things he's doing in our country today. And that gives us faith and hope that even as God acted yesterday, even as God is acting today, he will act tomorrow. So adoration, I praise God, I get things right size. Confession, I get myself cleaned up by God so that I can partner with God in what he wants to do through the prayer time. I say thank you to God for what he has done, for what he is doing, so that I have the faith to make some bold and audacious request for what it is God wants to do in the future to get us through this crisis. So that brings us to the letter S which is supplication. All supplication is an old-fashioned word for ask. So what kinds of things do we want to ask God for our country? What kinds of things do we want to ask God to get us through this crisis? Well, let me suggest four. The first one is that uh, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Remember that one? How's it go? Yeah, our Father who art in heaven how would be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, okay, we, we can stop there. Yeah, I got this section over here that's finishing it out. Okay, that's okay, but uh, I'm going to stop here. So we want to pray Jesus' prayer for America. Jesus, please bring your kingdom. Please bring your kingdom to America. Please establish your kingdom in the United States of America. Please establish it more fully. Please cause your will to be done in the United States of America the way that it's done in heaven. That's what I want to pray for this country. And if we want to pray more specifically, we can take a look at Matthew chapter 5, Matthew 6, Matthew 7. This passage is called the Sermon on the Mount, and it's Jesus describing kingdom life kingdom lifestyle, the change that the kingdom brings in us, the things that God wants to do in our lives through his kingdom. And these things are seen all the way through. So I'm just going to take a look at what it would be like if we prayed the first uh, few Beatitudes. So on the Mount begins with Beatitude. So Jesus, please turn America into a country of people who call out to you for help. Please give America the strength to get back up when we get knocked down. Please cause all the people in America and America itself to put its power under your control so that we can do the right thing at the right way in the right time. Please, God, cause America to be a country and a people that values relationships. Please make our relationships work so that we can get along with people in our families, with people in our neighborhoods, with people who have different backgrounds than we do, with people who have different political opinions than we have. Please make it possible for us to get along with all the people in our country. And Father, please make America a nation of mercy. Make us a nation of mercy. Mercy Mercy is about using our anger not to punish or condemn 
or blast, but using our anger to forgive, to let the other person off the hook, and then using the energy from the anger to work with the other person, to work with the other group, to resolve the issue that is between us, and to work out our relationships so that we can love one another and can support one another. God, please turn America into a country of mercy. So we want to pray what Jesus taught us. Our Father, your kingdom come. Second thing we want to pray is we want to pray about what's in the news. We want to pray about the COVID virus. We want to pray about this Republican that makes the news for something that he or she said. We want to pray for what uh, for this Democrat that makes the news for what he or she said. We want to pray for uh, all kinds of people. Pray for our leaders. Pray for the stuff that we see in the news. Pray for the uh, two Texas police officers that uh, were shot in an ambush uh, last night or this morning. Pray for their families. Pray for what we see in the news. Your kingdom come. Pray for what's in the news. Another thing we want to do is we want to pray in the Spirit. Paul talks about praying in the Spirit in Ephesians. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. How do we pray in the Spirit? Well, we pray in the Spirit by taking a moment and saying, Holy Spirit, please help me pray with you through you and in you. And then we're still for a moment. And in the stillness, the Holy Spirit will bring things to our minds to pray about. Thoughts will pop in. Uh, we'll feel stuff to pray about. He will impress upon our hearts things to pray about. And as I was putting this together and took that moment to stop and to pray in the Spirit, what came to mind was Black Lives Matter. So we pray for Black Lives Matter. Father, I ask that you bless the leaders of Black Lives Matter. And when I'm praying, asking God to bless the leaders of Black Lives Matter, I'm not praying that God will do whatever it is that they want, but rather I am praying that God will bless them with his life, with his resources, and that God will lead them in the direction that he wants them to go. And when I pray for Black Lives Matter, I am praying that God will use Black Lives Matter to accomplish what God wants to accomplish through Black Lives Matter. God, please bless Black Lives Matter, and please work in the lives of their leaders. Now, why would the Holy Spirit want me to pray that? Well, if I'm not praying for God to guide and direct Black Lives Matter. Who's going to direct Black Lives Matter? Or the Republicans? Or the Democrats? Or the... Yeah, I don't want to go there. I want to go to praying for God to guide and direct and to bless these people. Uh, the fourth thing that I want to pray for uh, is the harvest, is the harvest. We will pray for revival. Uh, Jesus talks about this in Matthew 9. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. So we want to pray for harvest. We want to pray for revival. We want to pray that God's Spirit sweeps across this land and the tens of millions of Americans come to Jesus and that that many more come back to him. And as we pray that, Jesus wants us to know that it's more important that we pray for workers for the harvest. Jesus seems less concerned about revival coming or whether revival is going to come. He looks and he sees it. His concern is, are there people to work the harvest? If tens of millions of people come to Christ? Are there going to be enough people to help disciple them, to raise them up, to learn how to live as a follower of Jesus and to act and to pray and to speak and to live for him? So we want to pray for revival, but we also want to pray, God, please use me in the revival. 
Please use me to bring other people to you. Please use me to help disciple people. And God, please use me to train other people to be harvest workers in the revival too. Father, please raise up workers for the revival that you are bringing, for the revival that is coming. Those are the things that I want to pray. To pray America through the crisis, those are the things that I want to pray. I want to praise God, right-size everything. I want to confess. I want to get myself right with God and get myself lined up with God so that I can be used by God during this time of prayer. I want to say thank you to God to build my faith. And then I want to pray bold prayers about God's kingdom's coming, about God resolving the issues that I see in the news, about praying as the Spirit guides and praying for the harvest and to be a worker in the harvest. As we pray these things consistently and constantly, we will pray America through the crisis. When we pray, God acts, stuff happens, and the future belongs to those who will pray. Now, all that's the easy part. Here's the hard part. When are you going to pray? Where are you going to pray? Let me suggest that you get out your day timer, your calendar, your phone and that you pick a day one day a week and a time during that day when you will pray these things for our country so say Monday at 5 p.m. get it in your day timer get it in your calendar put it on your phone set an alarm on your phone to remind you so that you don't forget let me suggest that you get a prayer partner Somebody that you will meet with to pray these things for our country. Meet with them once a week. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, a half hour, 40 minutes, an hour, whatever. Meet with them once a week. Uh, meet in person. Do a phone call. Uh, do FaceTime. Do Skype. Do Zoom. Whatever. But once a week, meet with them and pray through these things. Put it on your calendar. Set an alarm. Let me suggest that you pray with me on Thursdays. Thursday, I'm going to be hosting a Pray for America, a Zoom call, 12:15 uh, p.m. to 1 p.m. on Thursday. Lunchtime on Thursday, we will come together on Zoom and we will pray these things that we have been talking about. You can eat your lunch during this time, or better yet, Skip your lunch. Miss a meal for America. Yeah, it's that important. I will send out the Zoom link on Facebook this week so that you can join me. And we will pray America through this. Let me also suggest that uh, between now and the end of the year, we have one or two larger prayer gatherings where we invite friends and neighbors, uh, other churches, other people to come pray with us for America. And if you would like to help me put those one or two events together, uh, email me, uh, jemclaren at gmail.com, or call me or text me, 440-454-9630. Uh, it's right there on the screen. I had a couple of folks uh, connect with me yesterday after uh, I did this with the Man in the Mirror group here in Naples. So I got a couple on board, would like a few more on board so that we can begin to plan how we can have a larger prayer gathering uh, here in Naples and maybe online in uh, some way so that people in Connecticut and Tennessee and Cleveland and Nevada and the Philippines can uh, participate in it as well. So uh, those are some ways that we can pray. It's what to pray for. Those are some just suggestions for times and places to pray. One last word. One last word. 
we're going to be in this for the long haul. We're not going to pray one day and suddenly America is through the crisis. We're going to be in this for the long haul. We're going to have to pray for days, for weeks, for months, for years maybe, till we get America through the crisis. I don't know how long the crisis is going to last, but what I know is that we need to have the stamina, the endurance, the stuff to stay with it to pray America through. It's going to be a long-term effort. When we pray, God acts, stuff happens. The future belongs to those who pray. Let me say it again. The future belongs to those who pray. But we have to pray. We have to stick with it. You see, this crisis has come in our lifetimes, at this point in our lives, for us to rise up to pray. This is our moment. This is your moment. This is my moment. This is the moment in our lives where we're going to have the biggest impact upon the history of our country and the history of our world. This is our moment. Let us rise to it. Let us say we will pray and let us make the plans to pray and to pray and to pray and to pray until we along with God get America through the crisis. The, the, the crisis, the resolution of the crisis, the end of the crisis is not going to be determined by Donald Trump or Joe Biden. It's not going to be determined by Democrats or Republicans. It's not going to be determined by the Chinese or the Russians or Bill Gates or George Soros or whatever else. It's going to be determined by you and I. Will we pray? If we pray, We'll get through this and become the country that God wants us to be on the other side of the crisis. If we don't, well, I don't want to go there. And you say, well, you know, there's, there's only a, a few of us. Well, that's enough. That's enough. But one other thing I know. Even as God is working with us to call us together to pray, so he is working all across the country with all kinds of other people to call people to pray, to call people in America to pray, and our prayers and our voices will join with them. And together, if we pray, we will pray America through this crisis. And we'll create a future for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. And we'll have been participators with God in the new beginning that he is bringing to our country. Yeah, let's pray. Let's pray. Can we do that right now? Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this call to prayer. Please help us to rise up and to pray. Please give us the determination to pray. Please give us the motivation to pray. Please give us the inspiration to pray. Please give us the strength and the stamina to pray and to keep on praying even when the news is bad, even when we're overwhelmed, even when we're anxious, even when we're fearful, even when it seems like there's no way out. Give us the stamina and the endurance and the faith to pray even then. Because we know that when we pray, you act, and stuff happens. Help us, Father, to be the ones who claims the future with you and for you. In the name of Jesus, who leads us on what we pray, amen. 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 Oh, time for the offering. Jose, as we are recovering from that prayer, uh, would you pass the offering baskets? 
Thank you, Jose. And if you don't see Jose come by where you are, uh, you can uh, give through the website paradisecoastchurch.org. ParadiseCoastChurch.org. Go to the giving tab there, and you'll find directions about how to give online. Uh, many of you are doing that. We thank you for the gifts that are coming in. If you are old school, you may mail a check to 981 Hampton Circle, Naples, Florida, 34105. There's the address. If you're in Canada, you can send it to 981 Hampton Circle, Naples, Florida, 34105. Thank you for all of those of you who are giving. May God bless you as you give. Uh, some announcements. Hey, Pray for America Zoom call on Thursday. Hey, where have we heard about that before? 12.15 uh, to 1 p.m., and we will pray like we have been talking about this morning. Paragon Theater update. When are we going to be in the Paragon Movie Theater? I thought we were going to be there today. But we aren't. We're here. So when are we going to be in the theater? I don't know. I know a couple of things. One of the things I know is that uh, we weren't in the theater this week because uh, we were quarantined. Uh, Eden who uh, runs the computer for us. Uh, her dad had a positive test for uh, COVID-19. The earliest they're allowed out of the house uh, is Tuesday if the next test comes back uh, negative. So I need to pray for, uh, for Mike to get a second, uh, to get a second, to get a negative test back so that Eden can be out with us with the computer to help make all kinds of things happen. The tech stuff that we're doing, uh, thank you for those of you who have been uh, helping to uh, pay for the tech stuff. About $500 of the $2,000 have come in for that. It's not too late to give there. But the tech stuff, we are this close. This close. We, we got it all to work on uh, Wednesday when we were there. Uh, we need different cameras, so we're working on that. And there's a few things that uh, we need to do in terms of actually running the programs to make it a little smoother. But we are nearly there. Talked with Mark, the theater manager. And Mark, the theater manager, said it might be the end of July. It might be August before they open the studios keep moving the release of the pictures back. So we need to pray that uh, the studios will say, hey, we're going to release these movies anyway, and we need to pray for them. We need to pray that people will come out and see the movies. We need to pray that those executives will move forward so that the theater is open to us. Uh, Mark has said that he's talking with uh, his superiors about letting us in there to worship even though uh, they're not showing movies. They're open. <laughs> they have staff there all day, every day, so it's no big deal to let us in. So pray that uh, we get into the theater soon, and the way I've been praying is let the theater open for us when we have all the technology ready to roll so that when we open we can do it well. So that's where we are there. Hey, coming up, the Leadership Summit, Global Leadership Summit, August 6th and 7th. It's all about leadership. All of us have leadership. We all have influence, whether in our families, uh, in our churches, in our neighborhoods, in our places of business. Some of us have official leadership titles. Others of us are leaders of group or mentors of people. So come out to the Leadership Summit. It is geared to make our leadership better because when a leader gets better, everybody benefits. It's going to be completely online this year. Uh, there is a website there that you can go take a look at it. Uh, you can email me if you want to go, and I can get you in for a reduced cost. So this week, I am going to be uh, making the registrations happen. So please let me know, uh, and I will be contacting uh, some of you uh, about whether or not you're interested. So that's coming up on a Thursday and a Friday. 
Anything else happening? Oh, I lost my benediction slide. So, uh, before we go, was God in the house? Was God in the house? If God was in the house, let us know that God was in your house. Send us some likes. Uh, send us a message. Uh, cause uh, happy things to go up the screen. Uh, was God in the house? Let us know. Benediction. May the love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with you and be with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so our service is officially concluded. I am going to uh, go over here to Facebook and see uh, who has uh, joined us and say some hellos. So, Dorothy, welcome. Good to see you. Who else do we have? Holly. Holly? Holly, welcome from the estates, and uh, is Mike with you today, or is he uh, out on the road with a race car somewhere? Welcome. Who else we got? Diana saw the Belmont Stakes. Diana saw the Belmont Stakes. Good for you, Diana. They showed it in Nevada. Yay! Uh, Diana, did Tis the Law win on your screen? Who else we got? Okay, we say hello to everybody else. Bob Clark. Bob Clark. Welcome, Bob. Oh, Tina. Wayne and Tina from New Jersey. Welcome. Good to see you. Tracy, Tracy joined us. Good morning, Tracy. Good to see you. Good to see you. And Roger and Suzanne, good to have you on board with us this morning. Stephen Spano. Stephen Spano. Uh, Roy's there. Did we say hi to Roy earlier? We said hi, Roy and Lauren. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Bruce and Carol. Yeah, we said hey to Bruce and Carol. And uh, Jose and Mike. Mike says Mike's on the road. Mike. Holly says, Holly Mike's, says on the road. Mike's on the road. And there's Lynn. All right. Okay, I am going to uh, be responding there on Facebook. I hope to see you all on Thursday.